Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about home shows. It's coming into home show season. Home shows, trade shows, home garden show, all of the shows. So if you're in window cleaning at all, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I've said that every episode for hundreds of episodes, but we've been doing this for seven years. Seven and a half years, actually, this month. So go back, watch, listen, uh, anywhere podcasts are found, YouTube, all that good stuff. And if you're not your first time here and you've been here, then what's up? Thank you for uh, hanging out. So anyway, we're talking about home shows. And I say home shows, but people say home and garden. They say garden shows. They say remodel sh- Whatever shows that you're doing. And I'm talking about like a, a, a show that you would go to, have a booth, and have people who are looking for home services. There's going to be something in your area. Home shows come in the spring. You got to get ready for them. There's a bunch of stuff. Now, I'm recording this kind of going into winter, which is giving you enough time to plan for home shows coming out of winter. So that's why we're talking about it now. And I really, really, really like home shows. Um, with what I do now, I help businesses, window cleaning companies, you know, become um, profitable. You know, I obviously sell equipment, but also help just the business side. And uh, I've gone through a lot of home shows, not only for myself, but for others. And they are so successful. They are a really, really, really good way to get a big chunk of people, but also just get your logo out there, get information in people's hands, book jobs on site, and just say hi to people. There's something to be said for being a real company. It's why WCR, you see us, we're at a lot of shows. We do a lot of that stuff. It's because we want to be real, right? It's the same thing with your company. Getting there, shaking somebody's hands, like, oh, wow, awesome. You know, can I get you a quote? Here's what we do. Take some info. That kind of thing is just so valuable. And that's where home shows are. Home shows can be affordable also. I mean, you're spending maybe a couple thousand dollars on the booth space, and that's a handful of jobs. You know, what's your average ticket? 300 bucks? You know, you're spending $2,500 on a booth, potentially less, um, and that is 10 jobs. You know, what's the trickle down? What's a customer actually worth to you? You're talking about instant ROI, that's something, but how much is a customer worth? If you're doing the dentist clothes, which is making sure that every customer is every six months, repeat, uh, getting them in the books the day they do finish their first service, you're already putting them and talking to them, getting them in the books for six months. A customer for $300 is $600 a year. For 10 years, it's $6,000. One customer over 10 years will pay for the booth. Now, you're not going to get one customer because you're going to be way better than that. But home shows are great. Home shows are absolutely great. The one thing in home shows is that it's like door knocking where you get an instant kind of close, but it's not a pressure thing because people come up to you. They see your booth. You say, hi, they come to you if they need it. It's fantastic. So we're going to go over some things that I think that you should do if you're doing home shows to really just optimize it and just knock it out of the park. And the first thing that I think everybody doesn't do well is that they don't have it so that you instantly know what you do. People think when you do advertising that, oh, if I put all this stuff down, they're going to read all of it and then they're going to really get it. No one was reading all that, especially in a home show. Like when they're walking, they're going to glance over. And if you have a window, they go up oh, windows. I don't need windows. It has to be the biggest words in your booth that just say window cleaning. Yes, you do a bunch of other services. That's for a later conversation. We're talking window cleaning because it's your bread and butter. If it is your bread and butter. Big, the biggest part of your booth should just say window cleaning. Because when people walk by, this is what they do. They're walking by crowds of people. And they're doing this. And they're just looking. By the way, if you didn't see that, I forget most of you listen to this. But they're just looking from side to side. They're looking as they're walking until something catches their eye. And if they don't instantly know, I mean, dumb down so a goldfish could figure it out. 
If they don't know what you do, they're going to not have that register. If they can register window cleaning, oh, there's not going to be a lot of companies like yours there. There are going to be a lot of window manufacturers or installers or siding or roofers and all that other stuff. But you are a little bit more niche. So having them know what you're doing right away. Remember, all we're trying to do is have them stop. Right? We're trying to create interest in what you're doing. And in big shows, I've done big shows, I've done little shows. Big shows, there are so many people in big shows that don't even look at your booth because there's so many people. Or they glance at it so fast, I'm like, you know, there's no way they figured out what I do. And they just keep walking. And it's fine if somebody doesn't have a need for your service or want your service. That's cool. We're not, you know, every single person doesn't necessarily uh, have to get window cleaning. But I want everybody who could possibly be interested in that to be interested in that. And the only way to do that is to instantly have them know what you do. Now, the other side of that that people want to do is, well, I want to be professional. I'm going to have a video playing of like, you know, the trickling water, close-ups of the... Artistically, fine. But nobody is there to look for your artistic versions with your fisheye lenses and your zoomed-in bubbles. and your, None of that makes any sense to anybody. Now... For you and I, we're like, that's a really cool picture. I own American Window Cleaner Magazine, so I know about when people do really amazing pictures in our industry. It's so exciting. But it's exciting to us as window cleaning nerds. It is not exciting to the customer. And it's especially not exciting to somebody who is only has a split second, literally, to understand what you do. If you get lost and you see water and stuff, okay, what is it? Purification? Gutters. It's raining. Don't confuse them with artistic anything. That's for your website or, you know, your whatever. If somebody wants to look at your window cleaning as artistic, that's something for them. That's not a customer. We're trying to sell our services. I want to have the best impact I can. Now, think about it this way. If you spend whatever you spend, say you spend $5,000, that's for your booth to be built and made and customed and candied and your time and your $5,000. I want to make as much money for that $5,000 because I could have as much context. I want to be able to talk to as many people for that $5,000. I'll not only, by the end of the show, book $50,000, but I want people to get stuff in their pockets. I want people, when they get home, they got that little bag of all their goodies and free pens and candy, and I want them to look at them and go, oh, window cleaning. I want to have the most touches as I possibly can. So I'm going to do everything I can to get that, and I'm not gonna limit myself. If you have something that's confusing to people and they just don't know it instantly, you're just not getting the impact. You're having all of these people uh, walk past and you're losing that. So it has to be simple and it has to be stupidly simple because what I want is somebody going, window cleaning, oh, window cleaning, oh, huh, interest. They're gonna stop, they're gonna walk in. You guys do window cleaning, huh? Yep. Perfect. So that one thing created interest. Now it's my job to shine. It's my job to sell. It's my job to explain to them. It's my job to do all that. But I need them to stop. That's the reason that when you go to a home show, there's people playing golf. There's a spinny wheel. There's candy. There's blah, 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 blah. There's all of that stuff in a good booth. And you're like, well, why? What, what is putting or a spinning a wheel for a free shirt? Like, what is that? How does that help them? Because now, if they do it wrong, that's something. But the reason all of that stuff exists is to interest kids because parents will always be with the kids. It's harder to catch a, a parent's attention than a kid. But getting them into your booth is really what's important. That's why there's candy. Really think about that. Why do you have to have, you don't have to have candy at your booth? You don't have to have mints. You don't have to have any of that. But guess what? It's a very low cost thing to get people to come all the way up and touch your booth. Now they're there. Hey, we do window cleaning and could I interest you in a quick quote? Now that they're there, they've stopped, they've gained interest, they've done whatever, you got them to stop. Now it's your turn to tell them all about yourself. 
And that's the big thing. The biggest part to any show, to any booth, to any of that stuff is to get them to stop. It's the reason that when you see water displays for gutters in every show to show how it's working, um, you go, well, yeah, you could have just a video. Yes, but guess what? If I got a little model, people stop just to see what's going on. They stop and look. I got them to stop. Why do I have candy? Hey, I always put chocolate. And I always say, hey, I don't have any of that... Uh, that hard candy junk or mints. I got chocolate. I got the good stuff. And people go, oh, yeah, nice. And they walk over. They're in my booth. Let's talk. The thing that sells in a home show is you. But you have to get people interested in you. And if you just stand there like this, and kind of have your head down and not looking at anybody or you're sitting on your phone, you will be amazed at how little interaction you can get with people. If you don't say anything and you're on your phone and you're in the corner just sitting there not looking at people, no one will stop and say hi to you. No one will talk to you. No one will, even if they see you in a window cleaning, they don't get that urge because you're just not really there. But if you're standing, if you're not on your phone, this is not the time to take other stuff. That's for somebody else in your office to do. But if you're there, your time is there. Smile, make eye contact. Hey, morning. How are you? Oh, good, good. Get people to know who you are. They want to talk to you, but you have to kind of tell them why they want to talk to you. You're awesome, right? If you can get them to stop with intrigue or knowing what you do or just being curious of what you do, now it's on you. Turn it on. Help them know what you do. Get them a price. That's the biggest thing you can do to show is get them a fast, instant quote. Now, before you burn me alive for the, the, the doing bids over the phone, doing bids, whatever, yes, there's a lot of you who are like, yeah, I, I can't just guess because I'm going to be off by $8. And guess what? I'm okay with that. I will do bids because I know the houses. I can see it. I can get it. I can understand how long it's going to take. A couple questions. In, in fact, if you tell me the type of house you have, the area and like the square footage, I know your price. I don't even have to look at the windows. But ask a couple questions. I can give somebody a quote within 30 to 60 seconds. So can you. I I'm not doing anything magical. And if I'm off by a window, I don't care because it took me 60 seconds to book it. If you get them to be interested, they stop. If they stop, they talk to you. If they talk to you, then they're interested in a quote because guess what? It's fast. It's 30 seconds. No obligation. Let me get you a real quick price just so you know. At least then you know a ballpark. I want to have something to be able to write that down, give them something like a quote sheet, but I want to do it right then and there and I want to book it. The biggest problem up there with having people not know what you do First and second is now you got them to know what they want to do. And you talk to them and you give them some information and then they walk away. They're, oh, cool. Well, thanks. I'll give you a call. Oh, wow. Great. You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. They're so interested. They stopped to talk to you. Get them booked. That is your instant ROI. There's a lot of people, if done right, there's a lot of people will take your information and they'll call you later. Maybe next fall, maybe in the spring, maybe it'll, whatever you gave them will sit on their fridge or they give it to their kids and then see it days later. Maybe they're not ready for it. Maybe they're playing bridge with some friends. Six months from now, somebody mentions like, oh my gosh, I have a window cleaner's card. Let me get that for you. That's the trickle down. That's always there. The more you can get it into people's hands, the more it comes back. But what I'm looking for is instant numbers. I want to do a show book so much work of the show, I've not only paid for it, I've paid for my time, a staff's time, whatever, and made a profit before any of the trickle down. Because that connection is different than anything else you could possibly do. And the instant quotes, everybody's got 30 seconds, they don't even have to sit down. Hey, let me, uh, let me get, pull up my iPad. Let me get you a quick quote, so at least you know pricing. Yeah, give me like 60, you know, seconds give me 60 seconds i'll get you a quick price and then at least you know no obligation there oh yeah i got 60 seconds let's do it uh, how many windows you got ask them the questions like you would what are you looking for when you go to a job 
If you're doing bids in person, what are you looking for? Just ask those questions to them. What's your address? Let me pull you up on Google Maps real quick. Just look at the house style. Whoa, this is like a crazy looking house. I may have to do it in person. Well, no worries. Hey, you know what? Your house, you know, we do any houses that are over 10,000 square feet. We do have to do kind of in person. Not many of those people go to home shows. What it is is the people who have these smaller cookie cutter style houses that are interested in doing things to their house because they have disposable income, but they're also kind of in that bracket. Fancy big houses, they don't normally go to that. They have like their own custom people. And I call it only talk. So almost everybody, you're going to be able to bet it right there. Get them a price. Price on this one, you're talking uh, 349 That would be for your inside, outside, track sales or frames. I know you said you also wanted screens, so that'd be those screens cleaned. And uh, we can get you in, it looks like, uh, on uh, Tuesday the 17th. So you got two weeks. Um, that would be a morning appointment if that works for you. Um, we also have an afternoon appointment if you'd rather do an afternoon. Oh, wow, yeah, no, that's actually a good price. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do, um, yeah, morning works. Oh, awesome, I'm so excited. Oh, so are we, thank you for the chance. You know, we'll be there, we'll introduce ourselves, we'll go from there. If anything changes, you have any questions before that, let me know. Done. They walked away, you booked the job, and now you have the sheet with the signature and them in there. Cool, I just booked 349. Put it in the slot. How much more do I got to go? It's all about getting them fast, getting them interested, so that you can then put them in the books. That's the end result to all of this. If somebody hires you to do window cleaning, then you've won. You, you've, you've done the thing. They came to you because they were interested in window cleaning. You told them why you're the best. You've let them know. They've understood it. And now they've booked with you. It's done. That's a win for everyone. The customer and you. If you just give them some info and they leave, that's not a win for anybody. They didn't get their, they didn't get their windows done. Now they still have the same problem that they did five seconds before they walked up to your booth. They just now have a, a flyer. That doesn't really help. It didn't do anything. They got a little bit more information. That's pretty much it. They could have gotten more by just doing a Google search, right? So let me jump off topic for one second with my shameless plug because I got to do a shameless plug because I like to exist in the world. And by me putting in orders, that's how I get paid. Uh, Costs you nothing extra to have me be your rep, but let me put your card in. I would love it. Big, small, it doesn't matter. If you're listening to this right now over Black Friday, we are having a sale also. So you'll have a little bit of time. Call me, text me, 862-312-2026. It's my cell phone. Call me, text me, whatever. I love, love, love to put your orders in. Also, go and uh, get a subscription to the magazine, uh, awcmag.com. It's the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Yes, real paper magazine to your door every single month. And there's window cleaning stickers uh, because they're awesome. So uh, go and get that also. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just do want to take a quick second. I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. I do want to take a quick second, though, to tell you thank you for everybody who has let me put orders in for a long time or even the first time it really really means a lot i i try to tell it even in text a lot of people like hey man my card's good i'm like thank you so much i genuinely genuinely mean that like it is the reason that i get to continue doing what i do is because of people who let me put the orders in and i know it doesn't take you any extra to do that but for me it means the world so genuinely small orders big orders it absolutely does not matter I just appreciate you guys letting me do that. So thank you for that. Uh, but anyway, 862-312-2026 is my cell. Uh, I think I said that. Anyway, okay, back to it. So, so far in the home show or garden show, or whatever, you've gotten them to understand what you do, which created interest, which got them to stop, and you've now talked to them. You've gotten them their quote, You've booked it, but if they're like, hey, yeah, uh, no, you know, we're just at the show kind of seeing things. No, not a worry. Uh, I'll follow back up with you guys in like a week or something, see where you're at. But you got any other questions? Here's the info. Here's the bid. This is good for 60 days, whatever your timing is. Uh, some flyers. Check out our website. I really just appreciate you guys uh, taking the time. Great. Well, guess what? Not everybody's going to say yes. I mean, if they do, fantastic, but they don't. Now you have a lead that goes in another folder. 
cool. I'm going to call Dolores, and I'm going to call her in two days from the show. So the shows always end usually on like a Sunday. So like by like Tuesday, I'll call. Some people call right away on Monday. That's fine too. But all I'm going to do is call and say, hey, uh, we talked. I got you a quote. Looks like your pricing was uh, $289 uh, for your windows. And I just wanted to call and see if you had any questions on it. Oh, yeah, you know, I didn't even look. Okay, no, no, not a problem. So um, if you do, uh, we still have availability either in a morning or afternoon. You can pick and choose. And then day of the week, you know, we're open if you have our first available appointments the 13th. But uh, we can do it after that. Oh, yeah, you know, maybe an afternoon appointment, you know, I got to get this done. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and do it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the follow-up makes it real. When you're at a show and that person gives you the information and they're like, oh, cool, okay, thanks. That is done. That Like, in their head and the, everything, every piece to it is done. They, they walk away. But for you, it's not done. If they, if they get to go to the next booth, they put it in their thing, and they probably don't think about it because their next booth has candy. They're into the candy. They've kind of put you to the side. When you remind them all of a sudden, they're like, oh, oh, yes, yeah, okay, awesome. They've given you the info. You got it all. It's on that sheet. Remember, I want to have them walking away with info, but also that price because now when I call them, I can say, hey, it looks like we uh, bid you at this price. I know all that. The more information you know, the more professional you are, just the easier it goes. If you call me, I think I gave you a price. Do you have that? No, no. Oh, okay. Well, I can't book you because it... Don't do that. Put it in there. Give them something. Now they're going to call you or you're going to call them and they're going to know what you're talking about. And maybe they'll call you. But have info for them to take. I love to have trifolds. Uh, brochures, I have postcards and flyers, and I have so much stuff that people go, I'll take this, this, and they just take everything because that's what they're there for. They put it in their little bag and they go, but I want them to have so much info about me that when they're looking through, they're like, oh man, oh wow, oh geez, oh, I want to have an impact on them later on as much as I did with them stopping in the booth, talking to me, seeing how awesome I am, seeing how awesome you are, how great of a service you provide, how professional you are, all of that stuff. Now when they go through their bag and they look at all this other stuff, oh, roofing, uh, yeah, what, what is this? I don't know. Ooh, look at this one, window cleaning. Oh, another one. I got more information. I go through a couple more pieces. Another thing for the window cleaning. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I took a bunch of things. Now they have the information. It re-sparks that interest. It's like an ad that you've put in their hands. Now, there's another thing. If they decide to call you or have an idea, this is where the trickle-down happens. I want to have the biggest impact on the trickle-down. If I have really good pieces, by the way, not all of them being big because I want them to stick it on the fridge or in a junk drawer or something like, oh, here's a postcard so I remember. You know, There's a coupon for you know, $20 off to give us a try or something. I want that to be something that they can keep with them. I've done gift cards at there, but a whole box of gift cards and say, hey, People come in and get interested anyway. Here's a $20 gift certificate or a gift card. If you do decide to use this, you know, at least you got one. I gave you two, one for a friend too, if you got anybody. Man, they'll take it. They'll take it. It's a value, right? I want them to be interested. I want them to know what I do to be interested. I want them to talk to me. And then I want them to leave with information. I want them to be just as interested, intrigued, and impressed the next day, week, whatever, whenever they look at the stuff. If they throw it away, okay, well, I did what I could. I can't control what they do. But if they look at it, I want them to be just as impressed. This is why we do big bids for like commercial projects, and I just want to blow them away with how professional I am. It's because of that. I want them to be as impressed just visually by looking at what we have than what I don't. By the way, if you have everything in your documents every piece you should always throw them back to the website because a flyer can only do so much you have to get them back but if the website's crap remember you're sending everybody it's like the final nail in the coffin take a look at our website if your website's not good have somebody build it uh justin monk seo you know i talk about dude all the time uh, him and bobby super fantastic people they do amazing work uh monk 
SEO is the name. I don't know the number off my head, but anyway, call them. They do website building and they do fantastic stuff. Have something going into this. You have time that when you send everything to that website, they're as impressed when they're on the website as when they got the papers. Do that. Have a real site built. I'm telling you, it will more than pay for itself. It'll pay for itself within the first few months and just continually bring you in so much stuff. Anyway, not about websites, but don't send them to a junky uh, website that you made on Wix and it looks crappy. Like you've lost it. All those razzle dazzle for the beginning. They're almost there. And then, like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, you know, well, people instantly always take what they see and they put it to you. If you're clean, they think you can clean. If you show up and you're dirty and you got smudges and dirt and like I clean gutters and they get sprayed on me and I smell like bird poop. They're like, oh, you're cleaning my windows. You can't keep yourself clean. It's instant in their head. Same thing with all of this. If your site looks professional, they think you're professional. If your documents look professional, they think you're professional. All that. And the last piece to this whole thing that you have to do to make this all make sense is to record everything. Remember I said, if you hand them some type of piece of information, it should be uh, like a carbonless copy so that you have one too. Every person who wants to be on your mailing list, hey, you wanna be on a mailing list? No pressure, just give me your email. I collect emails. I'm collecting every information from somebody. Yeah, I'll give it a quick quote. Yeah, cool, what's your first and last name? All right, phone number? All right, and uh, finally, what's the address we'll be uh, looking at today? I got all that information, guess what, it's in my book. If you only hand out stuff, you don't get the impact of you being able to follow up. You don't get the impact of follow up at all. And follow up is absolutely where you're lacking, not just you, but everybody could be better at following up. And that also is where you get more closes in a follow up because it legitimizes it. It takes the thing you're doing and makes it real. Oh, this guy's not a bucket bob. This is what he does. It's a Tuesday afternoon. I got a phone call. Oh, a guy doesn't work at, you know, McDonald's the, the week and then does that. Like, it changes the dynamic when you follow up. And that is what is needed for a lot of people to just say yes. Because they say, I never say yes right away. I don't want to go to the home show. I'm here for something else. I don't. A lot of people will book with you, but a lot of people will have that instant, well, I don't want to rush into it. And then they forget about you as soon as they take 10 steps away. You're following up. Because guess what? You recorded everything. You took all the information from everybody you possibly could. How valuable is email for your list? Hey, if you just want coupons to see what we have, sign up for our, our uh, email. And, and, you know, we send it once a month. But if it ever annoys you, just unsubscribe. That way, at least you know what we're doing. You can get coupons. We always have discounts, uh, sales, things, and services. So, yeah. What email? I'll write it down. I'll put it in the logbook of emails. I can go out of a show and have 50 emails, 50 new emails of people who were so interested in window cleaning that they put it in the book, even if they didn't go to quote, even if they didn't do the, oh, well, I have a window cleaner now, or I don't know, we'll see. But 50 emails. I could take that as a value. How many jobs did I book? I booked $22,000 of work. Take that as a value. I gave out you know, 180 pieces of information, that's trickle down. All of those things help to the overall experience of a home show, garden show, whatever. If you're in front of people, guess what? People have windows. Every person has windows. Every person. If you go to a, um, you know, uh, a show for um, Mommy and Me Expo, you think everything's got to be baby oriented, but guess what? Moms who've just had a baby or are thinking of having a baby want stuff clean. They don't have the time. They don't have the patience. They'd rather sleep. There's a lot of things. Guess what? Your service would do fantastic there. There's a lot of shows that aren't just home shows. Every person, every human in the United States lives in a house with windows. I don't know of any place. Is there, yeah, probably some weird New York loft that somebody pays $7,000 for is like a closet with a janitor sink and no windows. But everybody, for the most part, has windows. You just have to make sure that they know that you exist. Maybe there's a price. Maybe they want to treat themselves. There's a lot of benefits to it. 
Home shows are awesome. If you haven't done one, I strongly, strongly think you should do one. Um, I've had nothing but luck. My initial start to the company years ago, I went and did a home show before I knew anything about the industry. Before I had done more than 20 windows cleaned, I did a home show. And that first show, I booked like 42 people. And that was the first show before I knew what I did wrong in the show or what I had or what I have. I screwed up every aspect of it and still got that many people. Now, in the beginning, my prices were off. There was a lot of things that were off, you know, but that's a lot. That jump started my career. Maybe you can do that. So look it up. See if there's a home show around you. Um, might be something really worth uh, doing, but... Again, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It is what I do for a living. It is how I make my money so that I can exist and buy gas for my truck. Like it is everything to me and what I can do. And I would love to put your orders in. That's how I make money. When I put an order in, I make money on the back end and you don't pay anything extra. But just by having me do it, I make money and then I can live. And I like living. So please do let me do that. Uh, 862-312-2026. It's literally you can put it in your cart like you're shopping like normal and just hit save this cart and text me and say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I can see it at my end. Make sure you get your free gift, by the way. Make sure you get your shipping and everything. Plus, I got limited edition stickers, which the new sticker batch should be out in December. And I can add that in too. And it's just something that... I get a piece of and uh, it's a way that you can show appreciation if you want. People always ask about Patreon. I don't do that because I get money by putting orders in and I'd rather have you put or have me put an order in for you instead of you just giving me um, Dolaris anyway. So awesome. Thank you so much for everything. Um, before next week, if you do, look for some home shows. Find ones to do. Sign up. Get the ball rolling, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.